is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice on the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. The word of the Lord. Thanks. And my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. Hail to you, our King. You alone showed mercy for our sins. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethlehem, the home of Lazarus, whom he had risen from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief, he kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into the purse. 
Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I remember back to when I was a child, not, not that long ago, my dear, dear mom suffered from chronic migraines. Not a good thing to suffer from. Some days the migraines were so bad that she had a difficult time getting out of bed to join us or to have anything to eat. It was just very, very sad to see. Until one day, I thought that I wanted to do something special for my mom, something simple that she would enjoy. So I, I ventured out and I made my first cup of coffee. <laughs> and mom was the victim. I made the coffee, I got some toast, put some butter on it, and went into the bedroom to give it to her with a pain to, a, a pill to uh, calm down her discomfort and her pain. She was so delighted, she was so surprised that I had gone through the trouble to make sure that she was feeling better. I'm not sure if it was the medication or if it was the, just the company. In fact, the more I think about it now, I truly, truly enjoyed doing it. And, uh, <laughs> and frankly, I, 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 miss, I miss those days. I wish I had that time again to do what I did then. I, dear friends in Christ, I share with you a reflection by one of my favorite uh, gospel uh, commentators, Father Joseph Krampa. He writes, the gospel reading about Mary's anointing of the Lord's feet refers to his death and burial. In this reading, he writes, John indicates that we are, we cannot isolate this holy week from the rest of the Lord's life. Holy Thursday and Good Friday are not independent from all the parables, the healings, and the teaching of the Lord. In fact, this Holy Week will show the meaning of everything that has occurred up to this point in the life of Jesus. So, in our lives, every success, every setback, Every pain can be an opportunity for us to deepen our relationship with Jesus and thereby increasing or strengthening our faith. In other words, when you're suffering something, don't just give up, don't go into yourself, but give it to the Lord and sometimes sharing it through someone else. Don't waste a moment of the suffering you may be going through, let it be for your faith and to increase your trust in Jesus. You see, every pain we experience, be it in body or spirit, such as, as some of you might be suffering from depression. How about loneliness? Another one, anxiety. And perhaps the frustration of not being understood by some people when we're going through something that's not very pleasant. These can all be turned into a prayer when we offer them to Jesus, especially during the sacred week of the year in our liturgical calendar, Holy Week, the time when we can appreciate what suffering Jesus went through with our sufferings. He can take them provided that we have the courage to surrender it to them. To this day, I still reflect on the times that mom wanted my presence. Not necessarily more medication, more coffee, more toast, which she also liked, but a presence. Not a magic, 
but presence, to be there. I hope, I pray, that you can also be a special presence to someone, the presence of Jesus, just to be there for someone. So to those of you who are able to be of presence for someone, please take the opportunity. Be the image, be the presence of Jesus to someone in need. And you don't need to have a car to drive there, but if you have a telephone just to call someone and to say, I am thinking of you, that, that no matter what you yourself are going through in your life, and so many days and so many people after this recovery from COVID are still suffering for so many negative things in their life. Please, I suggest, I'm not a doctor, but I know of some people who've done it. And, and this is what we've talked about, we've prayed about, to go out of ourselves, to give of yourself to someone else. Because you see, going out of ourselves, as I mentioned so many times before, you tend to forget about what's hurting, what's holding you back inside, the darkness that you may feel by going outside of yourself to going to Christ. He will make things better. Jesus too, got that beautiful, wonderful, unending comfort from his mom. She didn't physically help him carry the cross, but she was there to support him as we hear and reflect on the cross. Mary was there, and when their eyes met, when they met face to face, that was the courage for him to go on to his death on the cross. We may not need that much help, but you know, again, when you take the time, when you take the courage to look at someone in the eye, to maybe to call someone, to be the presence of Christ, just think of what Mary did. How and why did she do it? Out of love. You can do it out of love for Jesus. You can do it out of love for someone else. You can do it maybe even to someone who might be a stranger, whoever it might be. Don't please neglect to go out and comfort yourself, even you know, as Mary did, <laughs> cleaning Jesus' feet with her hair. She did it from the heart. May you too do it from the heart. Do it for the love of Christ, because who knows, one day you and I may also need that same thing. Have a beautiful and holy week. Please join me as we pray.